This episode has been brought to you by FlowState, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow & Co, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. There is often a misunderstood and very powerful feature of Webflow that I don't see many people talking about and I don't see many people using. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the grid area property inside of Webflow and how to get the most out of it by experimenting with some layouts. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Oh, and if you want to pick up some merch, head on over to flowstate.dev slash store and you can pick yourself up a t-shirt. So I want to create a bento block area, which is the total cool thing to be doing right now. And I want to be able to manage and control the position of things in an easier way. And the grid area uh, property inside of Webflow is a great way to do that. So what I've got is, a, is just a blank template here and I'm gonna set up a bit of a three-dimensional di three um, area here where I can just add a bunch of columns, add a bunch of whatever, maybe that's too many. Uh, that looks good. And I wanna populate this with a bunch of bento blocks, okay? So we've got this basic grid area. And I want to I want to start naming some of these sections, which I want, say, the client or me at a later date, I want to be able to just choose where it goes and not have to worry about where it is in terms of the start or ending column one, blah, 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 blah. So let's start creating some content areas. Now, this is the first way to do it. You can say, okay, let's put this uh, top left, top left area, right? And there's a bit of a bug with Webflow's thing here. And I want this to probably end, you have to start with ending for some reason. I want it to end at number two and start at number one. That looks wonderful. The other way to do it is to select an area and say, okay, this area is probably gonna be my central area. And I'm gonna name that central area, okay? This is probably my preferred way of doing things. I'm gonna have this uh, here, click on that plus and drag that right down, uh, and give that a name of right area. And maybe you can see where this is going, um, but ultimately I'm just creating a bunch of areas which I want to occupy or want to be able to occupy uh, with the children of this area. So central uh, top area, and then this one looks good to be consuming the bottom left, bottom left, and then we've got the bottom center area. Uh, name is bottom central. Wonderful, wonderful. We've got our bento area, which for all intents and purposes is gonna be how we want things positioned on this page. Let's create a div block here, and I've got a handy class here called bento block, which does that. Wonderful. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six areas here. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where the magic starts happening because if I select this bento block here, this first bento block, over on the right here, I've got my area and I can select from a list of areas which are where I want it to position. So I'm going to put that one in the bottom central and I want to select this one and go central top that's that's that section and i want to put this one in the bottom left perfect you look at this this is absolute magic i am mesmerized right now absolutely mesmerized another way you can do it is let's understand which one it is i'm going to put it in the center where is this one uh what haven't we occupied yet okay i've broken it five, six, that's why there's an extra one there. Cool. So we have this beautiful area, which I can easily just go, okay, I wanna move that one to the top, the, to the right area, okay? Probably gonna have to move the, that one to the bottom left just to consume the different spaces, but it gives you a way to organize your different areas uh, without really having to calculate them or whatever. Uh, like I say, you can move them to different areas. Maybe that's a way that you wanna, that, that your brain works a bit better, but there's nothing like just, naming it and giving some sort of context to those who are editing the design of this page. Now, a word on accessibility. I'm gonna slip these accessibility things in every now and again. I'm gonna take this one as an example, okay? You can see it's third in the, in the DOM structure here. So if this was a link as an example, 
even though that one kind of makes sense actually because it's one, two, three. That one kind of makes sense, but let's take, okay, let's just move it there, okay? And then probably where's the one that was already there? There it is. Move that to the right area. So clicking on this one is first in this top left area. You'd assume that because you, if you're a screen reader user, you'll tab onto this link and then it will be the first. No, that's not the case. It is third in the list. Now, if someone tabs onto these links, let's pretend they're links, they're actually gonna go down the bottom there. They're gonna actually, the first one they're gonna click onto is actually this one down the bottom. And then it's gonna be this one. So you can see that the DOM structure, and I have another episode on this, the DOM structure is very, very important, but stylistically, we're positioning it in a way that sort of visually makes sense to us. Um, just worth noting from an accessibility point of view. So that's it, that's grid areas. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you are already using grid area, or if there are more interesting ways that you found great uses for it. I'll be in the comments as always. And until next time, Happy no coding.